Welcome back, my name is Teresa and I'm very much alive. And if you're new here, welcome. I have an awful garbage, filthy mouth where sometimes, just sometimes, I tend to use the word fuck as a comma, I know. And if you're not into that or weird stuff in general, this, my dear, is not the place for you. Feel free to X out the video here, no harm, no foul. But I remember our time fondly. If you want to jump straight to the overall first impressions of the Natasha Denona Love Collection, I don't know why I just did that, but yes, if you want to see that, I'll leave a time code down below feel free to jump ahead. So the bathroom at my job is pretty much nothing short of terrifying. Hello? Yeah. Hi, um, this is, um, this is on Liberty Tax on Boulevard, on by you. I was trying to get in touch with Tisha. Sorry, you have the wrong number. Oh, wrong number, I apologize. Thank you so much. No problem. Bye. And that's how it should be. <laughs> okay, what was I saying? All right, got it. <laughs> You have lighting that ages you about a thousand years. Offensive 70s style tile that never looks clean, yet somehow you always see the cleaning lady in there cleaning the tiles. I don't get it. The utter and complete disregard of people not shitting or pissing on the toilet seat. Or the one time someone left a pregnancy test on the sink, piss and all. Yep, that happened. I refuse to believe this is a woman's bathroom. Sometimes I'd rather just dig a hole near Park Avenue and just shit in the streets because somehow that would be more dignified. But I digress. Now my favorite thing in this bathroom as of late is that there's a hole in the ceiling. Now I personally like playing the game pee really fast before something jumps on your fucking head. Well, my sweet little lambs, the other day I'm in the bathroom minding my own business, washing my hands unlike some of the other creatures that I work with, when I noticed that there was a woman coming out of the stall that has the hole in it. As she comes out, it's someone that's not on my floor, obviously it must be either somebody that's on a different floor that likes to just blow up our bathroom or she works on the other side. In any case, I make eye contact with her, she's not really paying attention to me, but I happen to notice that there's something on her shoulder. There's a a giant motherfucking cockroach the size of fucking Guam on her shoulder. Like literally sitting upright having a croissant and a tea and it's like, hello. I fucking freaked out and I just went ah! <laughs> because listen, if you don't know me, I hate bugs. I'm terrified of bugs, rats, mice, whatever. And even if the bug is this big, you bet your sweet ass I'm literally going to jump out of my skin and run to another continent because that's how terrified I am. If you don't believe me, see me around butterflies. It is probably one of the funniest things you'll ever see me do because I'm literally in tears watching a butterfly majestically land on my head and I literally just want to peel my skin off. Can't really explain it. Anyway, something must have happened to me as a child. That's all I can say. Anyway, so I immediately jump back because I don't want anything to do with this shit. And the woman now startled because I don't know, I'm screaming in her face. <laughs> She's just like, what, 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 what? <laughs> And then she notices that Jeff, we're gonna call him Jeff. He looked like a Jeff. I actually saw his ID badge, it said Jeff. Jeff was sitting right here like, oh hey Susan, how are you? Trying to get her attention to show her some deliciously tasteful pictures of him on vacation with his family, Speedo and all, you know, banana hammock for days. Too specific, yes I know, it's another story I'll tell in the future. Anyway, point is, she's doing this, ah, fucking patting herself to death. I am of course standing now 10 feet away from her, grabbing my face, just screaming, because I am no good in a fucking panic, obviously. Seriously, no good. <laughs> I just, ah, I guess that's all I know how to do. I just turn into like one of those hysterical women from the 40s. It just, it just happens. Anyway, finally the lady calms down. I calm down. I stop screaming. And now we realize there's no Jeff. She didn't successfully uh, smush Jeff. We don't know where Jeff is. Now we're both like kind of frantic, just like checking our hair, just like patting ourselves down. And there's no Jeff. There's no Jeff. I, I have no idea. I don't even know, there was no Jeff. And then I'm starting to think to myself, oh my God, was there a Jeff at all? Like, am I in the matrix? Did I glitch a little bit? So we're both freaking out. And then we realize that we need to just get the hell out of that bathroom. <laughs> and never return to it ever. So for the rest of the day, I just deemed that bathroom haunted and went on my merry way. Now you think the fun would stop there. No, no. So now it's later in the day and I have to go to the bathroom and I realize I can't go to my floor's bathroom because you know, Jeff lives there and I just, I can't mess with Jeff today. I leave my floor, I go to a different bathroom and then on this floor, I don't know what is wrong with women or even just people in general, but can I tell you, I go into the stall, there's just an immediate shit cloud that just hits me and I'm like, man, if I could smell this and being someone that has literally no sense of smell, ah, uh, this is bad. So of course there's like four stalls and like, 
nobody's in the bathroom and like each stall is kind of like like a horror movie like it's only like open just a little bit so you kind of have to push it through i shit you not each stall in that bathroom literally it was like shotgun blast like shotgun blast like somebody ate six pounds of taco bell and decided to punish the porcelain every one of them and it wasn't like it was just sitting in the bowl it was everywhere which a part of me was like really wonder if there was like a set of people that had the same food for lunch and then they all had like an explosion that's actually a pretty good team building actually exercise. But in any case, I was so terrified of that bathroom that I just decided to hold it until I went home. So about six hours later, <laughs> I finally went to the bathroom at my house. Yep. That was my day. How was yours? On today's video, we're gonna be talking about the new Natasha Denona Love Collection. So the only things that I got from this collection, because honestly, I just forgot about the lip glosses. It's just, they're cool because they're nude, something that I would like, but I don't know, I just kind of like, just totally like brain farted. I, I don't know what happened. So what we're gonna talk about today, which is purely just a first impressions, because obviously I just played with these today. I need a little bit more time with the boobs before I can actually say like, hey, is this worth it or not? But I feel good enough that I can kind of give you a little bit of information about these two guys. So let's talk about the palette first. Retails for about $65 and it's pretty much in the line of the last few Natasha Denona palettes that have come out. The standard plastic case comes with a nice little mirror here and you get about 15 shades. And there are also a couple of different finishes in here. Now, uh, right off the bat, I have to say as someone who is has like a love-hate relationship with Natasha Denona, I want to love her. She just wants to hate me. And it's just, it is what it is. If you are new to this channel, hi, my name is Teresa and I'm a garbage person, but I have extreme eye sensitivity. And I find that with her shadows, especially with like some of her warmer colors, or some red colors, it irritates the hell out of me. And I usually wind up tearing like crazy and having like all these crazy bald spots. It's a huge issue. So the last $65 palette that I did purchase was I believe the Sunset palette and, or the Sunrise. I don't know, I always fucking mix those two up. In any case, I actually decluttered both of them. And if you actually want to see a savage decluttering, I will link it up here. Feel free. <laughs> In any case. So for me, my favorite Natasha Denona shadows are actually like some of the mini palettes. The other thing that I really love too is the gold palette. I think it's fantastic. Fantastic. Everything else is like, Meh, go fuck yourself. I'm happy to say that I haven't really experienced that much eye irritation with it, which is actually pretty fantastic. This shade transparent, which I believe is the metallic shade. When I add setting spray to like a metallic or a shimmer shadow, I sometimes get this thing I lovingly refer to as spicy butthole, where it feels like I have a fucking chemical burn in my eye. Now with this, I don't get the real chemical burn, but I do get an eye irritation where if you notice this portion of my lid, I'll zoom you right in to show you. Okay, sorry my nails are a little bit janky. But if you see right over here, it's like all bald. So with the setting spray, for whatever reason, it just irritated the fuck right out of here. And it started leaking and leaking and leaking to the point where I couldn't actually even put my eyeliner towards the inner corner. So I kind of had to like dead stop it right here because it was just irritating so badly. My eye was also red, but then it kind of subsided. I'm thankful that I didn't get any sort of spicy butthole, but I noticed not to use that metallic shade with any sort of setting spray. So with that said, when I use say the metallic shades in this or the duo chromes with a brush, they were okay. I found that the best payoff was with a finger. I had no issue with that. There is a little slight kind of transfer, a little bit of fallout, but for the most part, everything kind of stayed put. But I will say though, with some setting spray, it actually looks a little bit more punchier, which kind of sucks for me because I can't now use it with the setting spray without it kind of causing my eye to tear up and then looking like shit. So that's the kind of shitty part about it, but I mean, it is what it is. Even with that small issue aside, this has been probably the most enjoyable Natasha Denona palette that I have played probably for like the last few palettes that have come out. Now, her mattes, I love the mattes in this. Like I really enjoyed it. But I want to note though, that these three mattes down here, like these pink shades, Valentine, Intense, and Soul, initially they look very, very different, right? Like I feel like this, it could be a nice gradient between the, these three. However, on the eye, eh, they kind of blend into each other a little bit and you only really see kind of two colors. I find that the color Intense is really not that intense, especially if you use it along the side of Soul and Valentine. Those two, I feel like kind of stand on their own. Intense kind of got lost in the shuffle a little bit. So initially what I did before I did these two looks, I actually just wanted to see what like a pink gradient would look like as I was doing it. You know, I liked it, but I was like, eh, 
yeah. Like I really wanted to have like a separation of color and I just wasn't getting that. So that's kind of like a bummer. I kind of wish it took one of these pinks away and put like maybe a different variation of pink or something like that or even another fucking purple color. Purples I thought were fantastic. I really, really did enjoy those. And uh, the red, although I used the red a little bit actually in, in my first initial look that I didn't record, the red was fine. I did notice though like I needed to use it on like a denser brush as opposed to like a fluffier brush. That's the one thing I will say is that these shadows I found worked better with a more packed or dense brush. When it was a little bit more frayed, a little bit more fluffy, that's when I experienced a lot of kick up and fallout. So it's kind of something to note. This is definitely way more pinkier and girly and Valentine's Day and all that bullshit in person than it is online. For whatever reason, online it kind of just looked like this weird whacked out version of the Jackie Aina palette from ABH. But in person it's actually a very beautiful color story. It's really nice. So I'm actually gonna leave my thoughts about it like right there because I still wanna play with this palette more. And I also feel like I wanna kind of compare it a little bit to the ABH Jackie Aina palette. Just, just a scotch because I feel like there could be some similarities there. So sometime next week, I'm definitely gonna revisit this palette to kind of let you know my full thoughts on it. But I wanted to get this up because one, I haven't posted a video in a week because work has been kicking my fat ass. And I just wanted to say hi to you guys and I missed you. And I just wanted to like show my little fat face on here. So I'm very excited for that. But um, so far, actually really like this. I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised. So the next thing I wanna talk about is the Natasha Denona Love Glow Cheek Palette. So this little guy retails for about $55 and um, all right, I'm gonna say it, very cheap looking, <laughs> snow globe-esque, kind of reminds me of Claire's Lisa Frank snow globe bullshit. And it's just, I don't like it. I kind of wish that, that we didn't have that. It doesn't really add anything to this palette. Just knock the shit off. Like, what are you doing here? Anyway, this was actually the thing that I was only gonna purchase and I wasn't even gonna purchase the Love palette. And then I kind of was like, oh, fuck, I might as well get both. This interests me so much because it was so glowy looking. It screamed alien slut and I needed to fucking have it. What you get in this little palette, glow cream base, which is this guy right here. You get a super glow blush. You get a diamond powder as well as a glow impact powder, which is pretty much like the highlighter. This is bananas, bitch, bananas. First of all, what what is this? I, for, I look like I am on vacation. This is what vacation Teresa wants to look like, okay? Literally dewy, fresh faced, not angry because some people just waste your time with phone calls when it could be wrapped up in an email. You know what I mean? This is what I want to look like on the reg. Just happy, glowy, alien mask, dripping slut. That's what I want to look like. This is fantastic. I am so happy with this thing. It's unbelievable because this little cream base thing over here, I was a little hesitant about it because I was like, I don't know how this is going to work. And I tried using it with one of my refer brushes and it wasn't picking up the product. So what I wound up doing was actually just like taking my finger and kind of massaging it gently into the pan and then tapping it a little bit on my cheek and then working it out on my fingers. And then ultimately I dipped a sponge in there and then slowly kind of started tapping it. And it looks so fantastic. It actually looks really dark in the pan almost. I'm sure the beauty lights are fucking blowing this to days, but it looks dark. But on the face, it's actually like a nice flush. Almost kind of like that Campbell Soup Kid look. Or like, you know, I'm sick, but I feel really skinny, so I kind of feel good about myself. You know that kind of look? We all know we love to look like that. Anyway, that's what I was getting with it. It just had like a nice, healthy glow. Now on this side, I decided to use at first the super glow powder, which by the way, this is the only cream powder in this palette. So like the little protector case is actually over both of them. The super glow powder, so beautiful. It's like obnoxious pink color, has a wonderful shine to it. And it's very, very metallic. And you're probably saying to yourself like, that just sounds fucking crazy. But like on the cheek though, it doesn't look as insane. Now on top of that, I decided to use this shade, which is the diamond powder, which I believe this is actually the first diamond powder I have have. And the thing you kind of have to realize about the diamond powder is that it's straight up glitter. It's literally fat twilight vampire glitter. Okay. You're going to be shining for days, but you know what though? Between those two colors mixing, I don't fucking hate it. I love looking like a sparkly alien slut. Fucking love it. Now the last thing you get is this glow impact powder. And I'll be honest, when I first used it with a brush, 
I felt like I saw no payoff, nothing. And I was confused. I was like, oh my God, did I get a fucking gut? No fucking way, bitch. So what I wound up doing first initially was actually dipping my finger into it. And then you notice I kind of have a little bit of the glow here. So I gently started kind of patting it on with my finger using a brush to kind of buff it out. And then I wound up actually going in again with a brush, but this time I picked a little bit more of a denser brush. And I felt like it picked up the product a little bit better. Now I look like Arby's Meat Mountain and I'm fucking excited. And on this side, when I put the highlighter on, I feel like it kind of gets a little bit lost because I already have so much glowing shit on my cheek, but it does add a little bit more glow to it, but I feel like it's more prominent on this side because I only have that cream base. Something to note, if you kind of keep layering things up, I feel like they kind of all blend into each other, but you know what though? I don't give a fuck because I look like an alien slut and that's really all that matters. The only thing I want to say about this is that when using this highlighter on its own, I think it's a little bit too dark for me. On its own, you could very much tell that it's meant for more people with like light to medium skin, I think. But when I use it over the blush, I feel like it looks uncooked chicken friendly. So I gotta keep that in mind. But this is fantastic. I fucking love this. <laughs> I love this so much. It's, it's actually disturbing how much I just want to fucking bathe my body with this. This is great. Totally worth the fucking $55 price tag. Love it to pieces. All right, so yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. So for my first impressions, let me know down below if you are gonna be purchasing anything from this collection or if you have purchased stuff or you're waiting for more reviews. Uh, let me know, because I love hearing from you guys. And please note that I will be doing more of a thorough review sometime next week, so be on the lookout for that. And uh, yeah, I guess that's about it. I wanna say thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it as always. Feel free to like, comment, hit that subscribe button, it's free. And hit that bell icon for notification of all my future posts. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, Patreon, Discord. Every other Thursday we have a podcast called The Miserable Three and sometimes I'm on my husband's Twitch channel where I just yell about shit on the internet and I'm starting to think that I'm going to be playing The Sims 4 actually just kind of streaming every now and again so I'll make sure to list everything down below and if you want to know what is on my face everything will be listed in the description box below and I'll see you little pumpkins later. Bye!